This is Information Service Engineering. Welcome to lecture number four, Natural Language Processing, part three. Before I will introduce to you the subjects of this week's lecture, we first are going to recapitulate what we did last week. So, where did we leave the lecture last week? We learned about natural language processing challenges. So, for example, ambiguity, which is one of the, let's say, most difficult challenges in any kind of natural language. And it can be on different levels. It can be phonetic ambiguity, lexical ambiguity, syntactic, or even semantic ambiguity. Next, we learned about how to conduct NLP experiments. And the most important thing there is, of course, to find out how can I quantify the quality of my results. So we learned about how to conduct evaluation properly and we learned about precision, recall and F-measure. Then, as one of the very first techniques in natural language processing, we learned about regular expressions as a powerful search and filter tool that we can use. This week now, we catch on exactly on the regular expressions and we will learn about a simple so-called finite state automaton with which you are able to recognize these kind of um, regular expressions and to implement regular expressions. So what you recognize in general are so-called regular languages and they can be of course characterized via the help of regular expressions or finite state automata. We will see that finite state automata work very well, let's say, to recognize words. But we want to do more. We want to find out, you know, how are words constructed. And for that, we introduce a new concept, which is a so-called finite state transducer. With that, we are going to do morphological parsing. So we want to find out if we see some surface form of a word, what is the lexical form? And we will see that we can do this by the combination of two finite state transducers, which are able to process a word as it occurs, so the surface form, and transduces it in its lexical form, which means this is the stem, plus the morphological parts, telling you that this, for example, is a noun, and um, for example, which is complemented with some affixes or whatever that say that this is plural, for example, if it was a noun. Okay, after that, which is the very first thing that we learn here in that lecture, we will see or discuss tokenization. Tokenization, what you want to do there is, of course, you want to do an analysis and somehow deconstruct longer sentences or longer parts of natural language in single sentences in single tokens in single words so this is tokenization and either you do this by you know identifying what is a word what is a single word and when comes the next word or what's the sentence what's the next sentence for english this might seem easy but of course there are again ambiguities to consider a period which you might consider as to be the end of a sentence sometimes of course also um, is the end of an acronym for example or um, a period might also occur in a number. So therefore, ambiguity also has to be considered here. Not to speak about languages that don't have proper word separations, for example. There it's even much more difficult to do tokenization there. And then we come to the most important part of the entire NLP section of the lecture. This is language models and engrams. Language models are statistical models of language. So the question we are dealing here with is, can we predict a word based on you know, a sequence of preceding words? What's the next word? And of course, if we look at language, of course we can do that. So don't judge a book by it. You might know what it's the next word that might come now. And you do this simply, of course, based also on statistics. And how to quantify that? You have, of course, to look at so-called conditional probability. So you look uh, what's the probability of the occurrence of one word under the assumption that specific other words have already occurred before. And a generalization, how you exactly compute here 
the probability of a specific sequence of words that comes from Reverend Thomas Bayes, who gave us the Bayes formula or the Bayes theorem by which we can compute exactly these kind of probabilities. However, this is theory. And then in the next part of the lecture, we will see how we can get actually the numbers of these probabilities by doing approximations, by doing uh, uh, by looking for experimental evidence, which means we are looking empirically at the usage of language given as huge text corpora. So we are looking in a corpus where language has been used of documents, of text documents. And what we do there is simply we are counting frequencies of words, co-occurrences of words, n-grams. n-grams are, you know, sequences of words. N stands for the number of words that you consider in a sequence. So bigrams consist of two words, trigrams of three words, and so on and so on. And you will learn how we can then also consider or compute the probability of the occurrence of a specific sentence or a word after a specific sentence based on this kind of approximation that we do exactly with the help of the corpus where we learn about the Markov assumption that we don't have to take into account the entire history and the maximum likelihood estimation by which we uh, approximate the probability of you know, the occurrences simply by counts within our corpus. So this is the content of the entire fourth lecture. So I hope you will enjoy it and we will start now with finite state automata.